So we have yet another resignation coming from IHOP KC, but this time it's coming from a member of the board of directors. Now, of course, with the news of this announcement, you know, prior we didn't have any knowledge about who was actually serving on the board. There were some rumors about who was maybe sitting there, but IHOP KC has never really, you know, at any point been transparent about this. Well, we now know at least one individual who was a member of that board. They're not anymore. And that is Pastor Shane Holden, who has now come out publicly and has announced that he has resigned his position from the board. So what was the reason for the resignation and why did he decide to go public with it? We're going to get into all of that here in just a second. Welcome everybody to Not By Sight News. Yes, blind Christian guy here reporting to you, reminding you as always, we walk by faith, not by sight. For someone like me, that's kind of my only option. Also, for those of you that would like to know my story, how did I go blind? How do I operate my entire ministry without being able to see? I made a video that explains it all. You'll find a link to that in the description section of all my videos. Plus, if you would like to contribute and make a donation here to my ministry to help me out, there's a few different ways you could do that if you enjoy what I do. One, hit the super thanks button on the YT video here. Make a contribution that way. Or you can become a monthly contributor for as little as five bucks a month. Just join my Patreon, patreon.com slash notbysightnews. Link in the description. When you join Patreon, you get all the videos before they hit the main YT platform. That includes getting all the alerts. You can leave comments over there, completely censorship free. Send me DMs. You get exclusive links over there. Check it out. It's patreon.com slash notbysightnews. Big thank you to everybody already contributing and those thinking of doing so. Thank you as well. Your generosity is greatly appreciated. Pastor Shane Holden leads First Free Church in Wisconsin. This is a, a church that, that's made up of, of several thousand members. And he came out in an announcement that he was on the board at IHOP KC, but not anymore. He announced on April 17th that, in fact, he has resigned his position, although it didn't come out public until several days after that. Now, the significance about April 17th is that it was just two days after IHOP KC had made the announcement that they were planning to shut down or really restructure and reorganize. Now, for Shane Holden, he speaks here in an exclusive interview that he was approached by Stuart Greaves back in November of 2023 to be a member of the board. He said that Stuart had respected him and, you know, looked at him as somebody that could not only, you know, contribute with being on the board, but could also help with systematic changes within the ministry. Now, of course, we know that a month later in December, Stuart Greaves was gone, right? He resigned as well for his mishandling of all of the allegations against not just, you know, Bickle, but many other staff there at IHOP KC that I have covered over the months. Holden talked about how he had a, an early respect for Mike Bickle and his teachings, uh, was never, you know, somebody that was, you know, directly working for IHOP KC, but he said he enjoyed the prayer room. He would come in there from time to time. And, you know, he said that he thought he heard the Lord telling him as far as coming onto the board that, you know, Shane, my, my body is hurting right now and it can use you to help towards getting some sense of healing here. And so Holden talked about that during, you know, the six months that he spent on the board, he flew back and forth from, you know, to Kansas city on his own, on his own dime. This is all covered by him. He participated in zoom meetings, phone conversations, all of it, but really what he was I think primarily brought in there to do was to act as a mediator between both the both IHOP KC leaders and the advocate group as far as trying to work out a mutual third party investigation. Now Holden cited one of his reasons, really the main reason for deciding to resign was the fact that, you know, they just couldn't come to an agreement. He was frustrated about the way this was handled. He said that he was friends with both the advocate group and those that were on the side of IHOP KC leaders. Uh, he didn't feel that there was any real malintent on either side. He didn't think that the advocate group was, you know, working to just permanently shut down IHOP KC. He didn't think that IHOP KC leaders were trying to mean any harm towards the advocate group, but he said they were just, I mean, completely at odds as far as how to truly handle 
this investigation. And again, he, he tried to work as the mediator. And he says, at one point, we got really close. And then things just kind of fell apart. He said that the mindset from IHOP KC was that, what do you want from us here? We already permanently separated from Bickle, which they never really did, but that's what they said. We already had our independent investigation. Of course, they're referring to Rosalie McNamara and that you know ridiculous report that she put out back on January 31st that never really interviewed any of the you know the members of the, the victims here that the advocate group was representing because they didn't trust her firm. Remember, they bragged about defending churches from these very allegations. Although Holden did say that he felt that the McNamara report was independent, but that again, it did not have the confidence of the advocate group for those reasons that I had previously mentioned. Now, Holden goes on to say here in the interview that the advocate group had recently uh, retained a new lawyer that they wanted to do the third party investigation. He didn't reveal her name. He says that I think she's very smart. Uh, but again, it does not look like IHOP KC wants to do that because they're talking about, look, we're, what do you want from us? We're closing down, right? We're restructuring. We're, we're doing all of these things. We want to move forward and heal that way. So IHOP KC is preaching about healing, yet they don't want a third party in there. And we know why. And this is what Holden said. He said, you know, when they announced their, you know, that they're closing or the restructuring, he says, to be honest, I don't even really know what they're going to do because it's, it's, it's not really clear. But he said, it, it really sounded like to me, and he was referencing that leaked recording from the internal staff meeting, that they're trying to protect their assets here and try to escape liability from anybody that would want to sue them. And just, you know, and, you know, Boz Chivagian talked about this. This would be a, a fraudulent transfer if they try doing something like that. And Holden said, that just did not sit well with me anymore. He says, I couldn't do it. I had to get out. And I think he did the right thing. I, I really, I really truly do. And as far as, you know, he wanted to touch on 24 seven prayer because, you know, I have KC says they're you know, trying to restructure to, you know, be focused more on 24 seven prayer in, in Israel. But Holden said here that it's going to be very hard to do that because I hop KC does not have the trust of Christians right now. And, you know, he said, you need a lot of people you know, in order to make that 24 seven ministry work. And a lot of people have left. And so to keep that thing going again, all the time round the clock, it's going to take a lot of effort. Holden said that if they would allow a third party investigation to come in there, clean things up, sweep around, look, then you might be able to actually restore some trust then from the community. But because they're not willing to do that, because they think in their mind that they've already done it. They're already stepping towards healing, right? And everything, but they haven't really. You know, Stuart Greaves, if you remember, go back to, you know, when the allegations against Bickle were first coming out. He was very adamant about not wanting a third party because they would not just be investigating Mike Bickle. They would be investigating all of IHOP KC. And that worried Greaves. But as far as Holden goes, he said, this was about integrity for me. He said... I felt that it was necessary for me to come out, admit that I was a member of the board because there's always talk about people not being transparent. Now, he would not reveal any of the other board members. I, I do want to point that out. He said that he did not feel that that was his place, that if they want to come out and admit who they are at a later time, then that's on them. But for, but for Shane Holden, he said, this is me coming out and, and just and putting all this out there. Again, just expressing his frustration about how all of this has, has been handled and he referenced this third party because this was something also that Elizabeth Herter, uh, when she gave her interview not long ago, that what the advocate group was going to be trying to do was actually crowdfund uh, the entire investigation. But even with that, you're still going to need IHOP KC to, you know, give the blessing on that or uh, for them to come in and, and be able to actually, you know, do that job. So whether or not an investigation is really going to take place or not, I just... it it may never happen. Let's hope that it does. But again, I've always said that can bring true healing and then shut that thing down. But, you know, again, we're, we're dealing with individuals here with an IHOP KC that uh, have separate agendas and again are trying to protect their assets and try and escape liability. Look, they're not going to escape from God. That's the thing. Whatever sort of earthly justice they may escape from, it ain't going to happen from the Lord. Anybody who calls himself leader is going to have to go before the Lord 
uh, and give an account of their life. But that's something that we know for sure 100%. But I want to hear from you. You can let me know your thoughts on this Shane Holden, his resignation from the board. Are you surprised that he was on the board? You know, maybe you were a member of his church at First Free Church there in Wisconsin and you'd like to, you know, provide some thoughts on that as well. Feel free to do that. What I want to do right now, something I do on all these videos, let's end this video on hope. It's part of my ministry outreach. This is an altar call. I've been doing this on my videos since 2016. No matter what it is that I'm discussing here in the church and exposing the false prophets, we always want to give people the opportunity to receive Jesus as Lord and Savior. So, for anybody watching now, if you're someone that has not yet accepted Christ into your life, I want to lead you in a prayer to do that right now. This is a prayer you could do in your own words, but I will give you the steps you need to bring it before the Lord today. First thing you want to do right off the top, acknowledge you are a sinner. That is something that we all are. The good news is that God gave his only son, Jesus Christ, to die on that cross for the sins of all the world as he died and rose again for you and me. He paid the cost. What you have to do is repent of your sin. That means to turn from sin, not just to say you're sorry and jump back to your old ways, but to actually turn from sin, which are those lifestyles, patterns, habits, behaviors, things in your life that go against the word of God. If you humbly go before the Lord, though, and ask him to forgive you, he'll wipe your sin away. And the Bible says he doesn't remember it any longer. And then you invite Jesus into your life to be your Lord and Savior. When you do that, you become born again, a child of God. You will have eternal life. Trust me when I tell you there is no greater decision that you will ever make than the one you do to give your life to Christ. And I pray you make that decision today. Again, more info down below. Don't forget, the links to donate to the ministry are there as well. Join the Patreon for as little as five bucks a month, patreon.com slash news, or just hit the super thanks button on the YT video here to make a contribution that way. It's all a great blessing. Thank you all again so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. I'll be back with more. You guys take care. Please be safe out there. God bless each and every single one of you. And I'll talk with you soon.